se vocês forem pessoas sensíveis ao clima, ah, então é melhor nem vir aqui durante o inverno porque não vale a pena. Sar Experience. It is cold and greetings uh, simply yet uh, from Minsk in Belarus I'm back in Minsk and it is a lot colder than when I was here during the summer and I did my summer vlog so in this video I'm gonna give you a little bit of a taste of what it's like to come to Minsk in a winter it's dramatically different than when you come here in summer of course where everything is green uh, the Sun is out and it's warm and uh, there's just a different atmosphere in it different set of things to do so uh, come with me to the city of Minsk and I'm going to show what you can get up to when you come here during the winter let's go Okay, so okay. I'm speaking to you. Um, it is 5 a.m. and I'm actually looking from the city. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can actually really show everybody. I'm sitting at a railing in the middle of the metro with these girls, Aliona. <laughs> and over here we have Lera. And this is where they hang out. It's like being uh, kind of like a bird on a pedestal. I don't know if you can actually see where we're sitting. Yeah, I've been to 77 countries now, globally, um, across all continents. Um, so I certainly feel that I've got a good, uh, good feel and a good understanding as to uh, the diversities that exist within different types of uh, regions of, of the world, certainly. Uh, but obviously it's been uh, very refreshing to come to Minsk. My understanding and knowledge of, of the country has grown significantly and in terms of the actual reputation of the place as well, I always had a perception that Belarus was very much like Russia. I certainly feel that Belarus has been perhaps the, the last of the bastions in Europe where they've been very much segregated from the interactions with the Western world really. Uh, and I think only now that they're actually reaping the benefits, certainly from a, a touristic perspective, but also the opportunities for the average person on the street to actually meet people like ourselves who have traveled, people who have um, you know, come from different parts of the world and therefore have different opinions and different perspectives. And I think the, the Belarusian people really, really uh, appreciate that uh, and really respect that. And I think they have an appetite for that as well to learn more uh, and understand really. So a lot of the interactions we had were incredibly positive. Basically we had a course, uh, one of the, like she is considered to be the best in Belarus. She studied in Britain. In Britain you have a really cool wide school, I guess. Okay. And the international one. Yeah. And London. Yeah. yeah. So food in restaurants in Belarus. Here I have a traditional dish. Hopefully you can see that. That's very similar to the famous draniki. It's called duni. So these actually have meat in them. Uh, so that's something you're going to see quite often here in Belarus. They also have some food that's similar with the countries around it, like Belnini, um, Vereniki, Borsh, of course, which is the classic Ukrainian soup. So you have pretty similar kind of fare in terms of traditional food here in Belarus. Open it up. Da, 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 da. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. What Belarusian specialty do we yes, have here? It's called Duny. <laughs> Keep it open. We're gonna eat it. Huh? It's called Duny. It's very. Called Duny. It's very delicious. It's yummy, yummy. <laughs> now, in terms of price, I would say the restaurants, to give you a good indication, are probably gonna set you back for a meal somewhere between 35 and 50 rubles. So in U.S. dollars, that's gonna be probably about 15 dollars to 20 dollars. Ukraine is probably about 30, 33 percent cheaper. I would say still in terms of restaurants in the big cities. Um, but if you were to compare that with anywhere in Western Europe, it's still about half price to eat in a restaurant in Belarus, in Minsk, the capital. So that gives you a good ballpark figure. It's probably half the price of the Western Europe uh, and definitely of London or Paris, somewhere like that's probably less than half. It's probably closer to a third. Tell us again, what, what's inside it? Uh, it's, uh, it's like a 
potato pancake yeah. uh, with uh, chopped meat and uh, onion, fried onions and uh, mushrooms inside. It's very tasty. So this is traditional Belarusian? It's tr yes, it's tr traditional Belarusian. But overall it's still amazing value if you are comparing that with traveling in uh, Western Europe or even Central Europe. It's definitely noticeably cheaper here in Minsk. <laughs> Terceiro ponto, uma cidade relativamente barata. Uh, e você pode ir nos bairros mais chiques da cidade e você não vai pagar muita coisa e vai ter uma qualidade uh, de serviço e de produtos que eu acho relativamente boa. De maneira geral, a gente comeu relativamente bem aqui. Uh, a qualidade da comida uh, que tivemos nos diversos restaurantes uh, era de boa qualidade. So I think there's a, you know, for anyone looking to travel to Belarus, I think there's an amazing opportunity for you here to um, come and have a wonderful time. Um, as I mentioned, the people are very forthcoming, um, it feels very safe. The weather's a little bit chilly, uh, but I think that's to be expected. And also it helps to have Connor as well. Um, you know, uh, obviously being the language you are speaking is a multitude of languages. Um, I had a, um, a date last night um, with, a, with a really nice girl and her English was very minimalistic. Uh, it was very basic, um, but uh, you know, Connor was free and available. And I just said, listen, come by, you know, have some sushi with us, have some uh, shisha and, um, he joined us for a while and um, you know he's able to bridge part of that gap really um, and the whole dynamic of the date completely changed in, in, in terms of she felt a lot more relaxed with me and you know she was able to open up a lot more as well because that language barrier didn't exist really so certainly from that perspective it was great traveling with Connor and um, you know the language uh, element is very useful uh, but I don't think it's necessarily critical um, to you know having a good time and having um, success with everything that you, you want to achieve here in Belarus. The sun is finally out here in Minsk in Belarus. It's the beginning of April. The long, harsh Belarusian winter is over. The snow has melted behind me uh, in the center of Minsk. We're here in the Miga. Uh, you can see one of the principal churches here right behind me. And that's something for you to check out no matter what time of year you come to Minsk. But when you come in the harsh, in the heart of the harsh winter, here in Minsk, what should you do? Now, definitely, it's a little bit quiet during the week in the winter in Minsk, but the weekends tend to be really decadent, and I know that you wanna check out the bars, cafes, restaurants, and nightclubs of Belarus's capital. I definitely recommend it. Let's go party hard in Minsk, Belarus. That's a great overview for you guys about what you can do in Minsk, Belarus during the winter. Uh, you gotta see the nightlife here. It's really, really great. I can, can't stop recommending enough. We had a fantastic time here. People are super friendly. There's lots to do, lots of great restaurants, and of course, bars, clubs, nightclubs, all that great stuff. So it may be cold on the street, but inside you'll definitely be uh, enjoying yourself for sure. If you are interested in coming here to uh, Belarus, uh, to Minsk, um, maybe write me a message. Uh, you can write me on Connor Klein at zarexperience.com or DM me on my Instagram. My handle there is zarexperience and maybe we might even meet up here in Minsk in Belarus. And if you're new to the channel, uh, definitely go and squeeze that red subscribe button and make sure that you 
whack the notification bell beside it so that you get notified whenever I'm uploading videos here on my YouTube channel. So if you have been to Belarus before yourself and you would like to share your wisdom on what you can do here during the winter or during the summer or during the spring or during the autumn, uh, definitely drop a comment below, write us a comment, write me a comment, write the other viewers a comment. We've been creating this great community of commenters who are, you know, enjoying somewhat of a sorry experience somewhere in Eastern Europe and you guys have really helped each other out. Great to see that, keep it going. So I will see you all, all soon, all your smiling, enthusiastic faces for this part of the world in the very next video. It's Fedanya from Minsk, Belarus. Ставьте лайки, подписывайтесь на канал Чест и добро пожаловать в Минск. Цар Экспириенс